Well, hello everyone. Today, in front of you, you see all the parts necessary, or majority of them, uh, that are necessary to build this power wall. Um, when I say majority of them, it's like I need 15 feet of this. So it won't fit over here on the screen and stuff like that. But th these are the parts that I use to build a power wall. The, uh, the first thing is the most important thing is, of course, those cells. Um, from the cells, I got a bunch of videos on cells. From the cells, we go over here to this uh, Craftsman wall cabinet, 28 by 28 by 12 inch. From there, we move on to, you know, we move on to these one not uh, uh, cable lugs, four gauge cable lugs. This time I'm going with 25 millimeter, uh, 25 millimeter long, six millimeter wide uh, studs for those cells, flange nuts. Now we move into the, you know, internal stuff, safety, battery switch. Uh, voltmeter, same thing as last time. DC to DC converter to regulate. Fan control. Uh, this fan control, of course, includes what I talked about before. The uh, uh, thermal control basically will turn on or turn off something at the set temperature. So the thermostatic control switch never go cheap if you're gonna ventilate your box get a premium fan get an Octua there's nothing better in the world than this this one fan is $30 of course interconnecting cables between the modules that go that do go on this copper bus bar now the copper bus bar is one eighth of an inch thick it's one eighth of an inch thick it is one inch wide and i need as i said about 15 feet of it this is a leftover from the last time i pay premium price because this one of course has a rounded edges i have a lot of wires wires going around these i didn't want the one with the sharp edges so yeah, another layer of protection not to cut in, you know, sharp edge, not to cut in any kind of wire and whatnot. You might ask yourself what this is. Well, these are from a previous build. These are your wife's cutting boards. These are really tough. Knife will not go through them. Scissors, you, you need some force for them to go through. I use these to insulate the si inside of the case. So, again, more safety i would like to keep everything as insulated as possible we move on to heat shrink tubing nothing special from micro center two dollars and 19 cents for about five four feet of this something like that nylon bar I'm going to use a couple of different thicknesses um, with height uh, and the length I'll cut to what I want to but these are to insulate stuff too uh, I have used it a lot the stuff is not cheap but I want it to be as good as possible aluminum bracing uh, to support stuff You see batteries over there in the corner and of course you cannot do anything without floor jack you always need the you need you need the floor jack to jack something up whatever just kidding and i want to talk about tools especially this tool this is of course your micrometer this is probably one of the most important tools that you will 
ever use if you're doing anything that requires any kind of a precision. We're not talking about cutting a two by fours. This is something which is going to help you determine the hole sizes, the distances between the hole sizes to mount this buck converter, I mean, this DC converter properly. So I'm going to talk about this. This is one of those important things. I cannot live without this. If this gets broken, I have to stop everything. We will get another one. Um, luckily, they're not expensive. And uh, I think this is fairly good. And this is enough for today um, let me know in the comments if you want me to make this as a time lapse or you want me to spread it across a couple episodes I don't even know if anybody wants to watch it but I would like to you know I want to try it if you guys had it just let me know I'm, I won't even do it I'll just show it done but I'm ready for a Powerwall 3.0 uh, a couple of changes made as I said, we'll go over it, and I hope by the time I'm done, I have 54 kilowatt hours of energy storage. Talk to you guys soon. Later.